Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on working with remote sensing with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and Virginia View. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. This video tutorial series builds on ongoing and previous collaborations and contributions provided by the USDA NIFA through the ADVANCE Project, the National Science Foundation, through the GeoTED UAS Project, the Ohio State University, and the Virginia Space Grant Consortium. This video series is associated with the Remote Sensing with ArcGIS Pro second edition book. We will use Landsat 9 imagery in this series, and we'll also begin with Chapter 10. Links to resources for this video series, including free access to the textbook and to the videos for chapters 1 through 9, are available in the video description below. In this chapter, we'll display the Landsat imagery that we downloaded in a previous chapter in ArcGIS Pro, and we'll use a couple of tools to compare two of the images, we'll review where the metadata is within ArcGIS Pro, and we'll discuss some symbology for raster imagery. Recall from the last chapter that Landsat 9 images are acquired as numeric data with multiple bands, each within the wavelength range of the specific sensor. Each band covers a different portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Also recall that we talked about the differences in bands among the Landsat missions. See your textbook for details on this topic. Let's review the files we downloaded and unzipped. As we talked about in the last video, these TIFF files contain the images for each band collected by Landsat 9. Now let's add these to ArcGIS Pro and take a look at them. Now let's add the TIFF files. We'll go to Map and then Add Data. Navigate to the folder where your unzipped Landsat TIFF files are located. And let's select the 11 TIFF files named B1 through B11. I'm going to shift click them and then OK. It could take a minute to calculate the statistics. Here you see the 11 images and contents stacked on top of one another. It's difficult to see all the TIFF files and contents because the symbology is expanded for each one. I'm going to collapse the layer symbology for now so we can see them better in the contents pane. And I'm going to expand this a little bit so we can see the entire file name. Notice as we saw in Windows File Explorer, the name of each layer is the Landsat product identifier with the band number at the end. In the map view, the layers are stacked on top of one another in the same order as listed in the contents pane. The bands must be ordered descendingly in contents with band 1 at the top through band 11 on the bottom. Ensure yours are in the correct order. If not, just drag the layers to rearrange them. So I'll drag this one to the top. Okay, now they're in the right order. Now, as usual in ArcGIS Pro, layers can be toggled on and off, so we can toggle off the bands we're not interested in. For example, if I toggle off bands 1 and 2, and you can see the image is sort of changing, what you see on top now is band 3. And let's expand the symbology for band 3. Notice that each band is displayed in grayscale symbology. The digital numbers here correspond to the range of brightness values within the band. Brightness values refer to the reflectivity of the specific feature. The higher the number, the more reflective the feature. And since Landsat 9 scenes are recorded in 16 bits, each pixel in the image can hold a brightness value between 0 and 65,535. So let's uncheck this one to see what's below it. And you can see there are some slightly different values in that image. I'll expand this and unselect this one, and you can see the band 5 image is significantly different from band 4 just was. Each band appears slightly different in the map display because it contains different brightness values from a different region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And as we'll discuss later, each band serves a different purpose for analysis. We can also leave two layers turned on and basically see beneath the top layer to compare them. I'm going to compare bands 4 and 5 by turning off all of the layers except 4 and 5. I'm going to go ahead and collapse them. 
And I'm also going to turn off the topographic layer because we don't need it and it slows down display. Now to get to the tools that we need, we're going to select the top layer in the display and go to raster layer on the ribbon. Two useful tools on this tab are transparency and swipe. So one method to compare the two images is to change the transparency of the topmost image to see below it. We'll change the transparency of band 4, which is the one we have selected. So if we go to transparency, we can either type a number in here, or I can pull this down and change the slider. So you can see as I change the slider, what we're viewing now is the image below it. So the image below it is very much grayer. You'll notice that in grayscale, it's really difficult to see any difference using transparency. The swipe tool is a much better option here. So be sure you have the top layer selected in the contents pane, and we'll go ahead and click the swipe button. Now notice as we pull our cursor into the map view, our cursor changes to this triangle. So as we point to here and we start dragging, notice that we are viewing the layer that's beneath it. And as we go really slowly, we can see this little river appearing here. Swipe is a very important tool that we'll use in Chapter 23, Accuracy Assessments. Now let's review the metadata for images inside ArcGIS Pro. We'll find metadata in the properties of an image. So I'm going to right click, go to Properties, drag this over here a little bit, then we'll go to Source, and let's expand raster information. Here we can see the number of columns and rows for the image, that the image is a single band, and the cell size for both X and Y are 30. Scrolling down a bit, if I expand spatial reference, scrolling a little more, you'll get more detail, such as the scene's projection, the unit of measurement, and some other details. This is some of the same information we discussed last chapter, except we're viewing metadata now for a single band instead of the entire scene. Now let's explore the symbology for these images. There's more than one way to get to symbology, as you likely know, but I'm going to use the tool in the ribbon. Here we see the range of brightness values, the stretch type, and the percentages used to calculate the stretch in the min and max boxes. Stretch is the primary symbology for raster imagery. Other primary symbology types that you can see as we drop this down, but they're beyond the scope of discussion in this video. Notice there are more options for stretch type. We'll review some of these when we analyze imagery in subsequent chapters. We demonstrated how to add the downloaded Landsat bands into ArcGIS Pro, display them, change their order in the contents pane, and identify symbology and areas of metadata. In the next chapter, Chapter 14, we'll demonstrate combining multiple individual bands into a single composite image as we prepare for analysis.